Before anything, just really want to give a big thank you to AMD for sending this card, the RX 5500 XT, 8GB, in this case from the Sapphire, so AMD sent a card and the version is a Sapphire Pulse RX 5500 XT, 8GB. Thanks a lot AMD for sending the card because this video would definitely be harder to make without you sending the card, so thanks a lot. Let's move on to the video now. Hello guys, it's Shield Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today we have a new overclocking tutorial. So, first of all, let's put the microphone a bit up. So, as in all my tutorial videos, in this case all AMD card tutorial videos, overclocking and undervolting, we are gonna raise the frequency and decrease the voltage at the same time. For that I'm not using any third-party application like MSI Afterburner, uh, Gigabytes, uh, Kit, no. I'm just using the usual AMD Radeon settings, so click on the right button of your mouse on the desktop. Click on it and this will appear, AMD Radeon software. Click on it and open it. So as for now you do have this menu, which shows the, the hours you played, the, the last time you played, how many average frame rates and blah 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 blah. So, what you, want, what you want from here is the performance tab. Click on it. And then you have the metrics, where you can see the GPU usage, VRAM usage, CPU, RAM and all that you need mostly, but you can also watch it or see it in the, in the Windows Task Manager here. So, yeah. But what you want is the tuning tab here. Click on it and you have this menu. So, you have the global, the global tuning, but you can also have game profile, so you can actually make an overclocking or undervolting profile for each game or application you use. For example, you have a game that it's really heavy and you really, really want to, to push your GPU to the max, you can do it on that particular game. But you, if you have a game that is actually really, really light and you want to undervolt the max in order to to kind of not waste energy, you can do it also. So you can overclock the max for one game and undervolt the max for others, okay? But we want here the global tuning, so these settings for all of our games and applications. First of all, you need to select everything to manual. So here, manual, enable, 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 advanced control, enable, Enable, enable basically everything, everything, sorry. Enable, advanced control enable and fine tuning card. Okay, we're good to go, I think. Yeah. Now, after enabling all of this, just go apply changes. The first step was to actually activate all menus you can possibly activate. The second one is the most important and it is the power tuning menu. So once again, you are, you are gonna go here to the power limit and push it to the max. In this case, which is the Sapphire Pulse Edition, you can actually go to a max of 20% power limit. But imagine if you have, for example, a Sapphire Nitro. If you have a Sapphire Nitro, you will most likely have 50% power limit. Uh, if you have, let's say, another Gigabyte model, uh, another model that isn't one of these two, you can have a power limit of, let's say, 30%. In this case, it is 20%. If it is 30 or 50, still put it to the max. Putting the power limit to the max doesn't mean that your GPU will out of the box consume more power. Once again, it just means that your GPU will consume more power if it needs more power to perform better. Just that. So, if you are if your GPU is actually being power restrained and it isn't performing as it should due to power consumption, raising this will automatically make the GPU perform better. This alone and in my opinion this is the most important setting as for the start. Okay. Now, after the power limit, let's start for the core. Yes, let's start in the core. So, once you are overclocking and undervolting, uh, you, you kind of actually do things step by step and not once uh, for everything. So, start with the power tuning and then go to the core voltage. So, as you can see, the core frequency starts at 900 MHz, which will boost to around 1820-1850 MHz. 
which is not bad for these cards, really not bad. But I found once again that the sweet spot on these cards, on any RDNA card, any Navi card, being the, the 5500 5, XT, 5600 XT, which can be unlocked by Vias, it is locked to 1820 MHz, as you can see in this video, but it can be unlocked uh, using the more power tool. Um, but still, for every Navi card, the, the sweet spot is 2000 MHz. So, you're gonna select 2000 MHz for the frequency, and then as you see, the voltage is 1142. So, as in most AMD cards, they come extremely overvolted, and you can actually get more frequency with less voltage, in like 90% of cases. Some cards are really, really hard, because not, not all cards are equal, in case all cards are different, so you can buy 10 cards, exactly 10 cards, so uh, let's say 10 5500 XT Pulse cards, and all cards will overclock slightly different, under, uh, overclock and undervolt slightly different, because all cards are different, okay? But well, I found that the sweet spot in most of cards is 2000 MHz on the last state, and as for the voltage, like I said, they come extremely overvolted in some scenarios. For example, the Vega cards come extremely overvolted. And here we have 1142 millivolts. So 1 volt, 142. Now, I found that the sweet spot is around, at least for my card and some others, is around 1070 to 1090. I do advise you to start at 1100 and do apply and test it on games after the after that test it on games with no v-sync nor uh, any kind of frame limiting so you can push your gpu to the max test it on games for example games like the witcher 3 games that are heavy on the gpu side control remedies control test it if the game stands more than let's say half an hour and it runs fine then decrease once again from 1100 to 1090. Go apply and test again. If it runs well for another half a, for another half an hour, decrease once again to 1080 millivolts. And once again, if the same happens and it doesn't crash, go to 1070. And so on till you find your minimum level at 2000 megahertz. Okay? If it may it may go lower, for example, 1060 or 1050. In my case, 1070 is the best. 1070, 2000 MHz, 1070. For example, my 5700 XT does 2000 MHz with 1100. So, yeah, it kind of depends on your card, but in these 5500 XT, most of them will do 2000 MHz at 1100. And uh, a good amount of them may do lower than that. So this alone will increase the frequency, so it will increase the performance, while it will decrease the power consumption and heat output due to having lower voltage. So higher frequency, lower voltage. Press apply, and we are ready now for the core. Once again, all cards are different, so take that in consideration. Now let's go to the VRAM tuning. VRAM tuning is 1750, we have GDDR6, 1750 for the lowest level. And here we can see that in this BIOS we can lead it to a max of 1860. So it's 110 MHz on the VRAM, which makes uh, a decent, yes, which makes a decent uh, difference, mostly on the GDDR6. So yeah, in my case I can push it to the max, 1860 and it, it will run wonderfully without any doubts without any errors okay most of the GPUs will run almost certainly at 1840 okay uh, but if you want a safe value to start start with 1800 once again do the same steps as before start with 1800 if your game doesn't crash for half an hour raise it to 1810 if it doesn't crash for another half an hour, raise it to 1820. If it doesn't crash, raise it to 1830. Not this, 1830. And so on, till you reach the maximum level, in this case, 
1860 megahertz okay easy easy peasy so guys as you see it isn't hard at all so first we did the power tuning option then the core frequency and voltage and then the vram tuning so now so now let's go to the fan tuning as for the fan tuning at least in this model it is pretty decent overall i do not like to keep the zero rpm function because you are actually having temperatures around 50 degrees 55 degrees in idle and i do not like that so i disable the zero rpm fan and um, the fan speed will go to uh, to about 600, 700 RPM, which is not bad at all. It's barely audible. So um, it is better to have the fan speed working and decreasing the temperature. So basically the temperature with uh, the fan speed working will go to around 35 degrees, which is the usual temperature for an idle card, okay? And well guys, there's not really much more to say actually, so power tuning, frequency, voltage, VRAM and in the end the fan tuning. Not much to say actually. So guys, this is all for today's video, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget hit like, subscribe and share this video. Once again, the profile is in the video description, so you have to watch kind of some ads and, and something, but well. You do not need this profile, you can watch the, the profile in the video, but if you want to have the profile, oh, well, help me, and I do help you by giving you the profile. You help me, you help me watching some ads, and I help you giving you the profile. Thanks a lot, and well, thanks a lot AMD once again for sending the card, and see you in the next video. Hidden behind that poster that leads to the real world. We all feel safe in that room. But sometimes, sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. I'm here. Why did you bring me here?